All right, so today we're diving deep into a historical mystery that still has people talking. The Washington, D.C. UFO sightings of July 1952. And you've come to the right place. Declassified documents, eyewitness accounts, we've got it all. We do. So picture this. It's the Cold War. Tensions are high. And suddenly Washington, D.C.'s airspace is, well, buzzing with something unidentified. And we're not talking just a couple of reports. This went on for weeks. It's really the number of people who reported these sightings uh -huh. and who they were. Not just random people on the street. We're talking experienced pilots, air traffic controllers. People who know what they're looking at in the sky. Exactly. Yeah. And these are people trained to identify objects in the air, and even they were baffled. And it wasn't just a case of, oh, I think I saw something. We're talking detailed descriptions here. Bright lights, often in these disc-like or saucer shapes, moving crazy fast and making sharp turns. Nothing like any known aircraft at the time. And that's not all. This is where it gets even more interesting. It wasn't just people seeing these things, the radar operators at Washington National Airport. They were picking up these unidentified objects, too. Blips appearing and disappearing, moving at speeds and with maneuvers that were simply impossible back then. Like something out of a movie. You've got these visual confirmations from multiple trained observers, and it's all backed up by what appears to be hard data from the radar. It's no wonder this event caused such a stir. It really shook things up. Before we get into all the explanations, and there are some wild ones out there, we should talk about just how significant this event was. And not just back then, but for how we think about UFOs even now. Definitely. You have to think about the context. This was 1952. The term UFO, I mean, it had been coined a few years earlier, but it wasn't this widely understood thing that it is today. Mm -hmm. This event, with its credible witnesses and the radar data, it really brought the whole idea of UFOs into the public consciousness. It became a huge deal, didn't it? It wasn't just a local news story that people forgot about. This captivated the entire nation. Yeah, it really did. It was huge. And, you know, it didn't just fade away. This had a lasting impact. It did, didn't it? Like, it fueled people's fascination with UFOs, right? right? And then all these books and movies. And it even changed how the government investigated these things for years afterward. And speaking of those government investigations, this event, it actually led to the creation of Project Blue Book. You know, that special Air Force investigation, the one that was trying to like figure out what these UFOs were, where they came from. Oh, yeah. Project Blue Book. That's a whole other rabbit hole. Mm. I mean, they investigated thousands of UFO reports over decades. Mm. And while a lot of them, they could explain away, you know, misidentified aircraft, weather stuff, just natural things. A lot of cases they just couldn't figure out. Wow. So even with all the resources of the U.S. government, some of these sightings, including a lot from the Washington, D.C. flap, they just couldn't be explained. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. Totally. And it wasn't just the government that was interested, you know. I mean, this whole thing, the Washington flap, it really captured people's imaginations all over the world. It was like suddenly everyone was looking up at the sky, wondering if they were going to see something amazing, too. And honestly, even now, all these years later, that idea that there are unidentified objects flying around up there, it still fascinates people. It totally does. And I think that fascination, it speaks to something deeper. You know, it makes us question what we know or what we think we know yeah. about the universe, our place in it, challenges or assumptions about what's possible, you know. I know what you mean. But going back to the Washington sightings for a second, we've talked about the eyewitness accounts, the radar data, even the government's response. But what about explanations? Like, if it wasn't birds or planes or weather balloons, what could it have been? Right. Well, there have been theories, hmm. a lot of them over the years. Some are more believable than others, obviously. Some people have said it could have been atmospheric anomalies, like strange weather patterns or temperature inversions, things that can mess with how things look, even make radar go haywire. Others have said maybe it was secret military technology that was being tested at the time Yeah. that could explain how these things could fly the way they did. I can see that. Those explanations kind of make sense, at least on the surface. But do they really account for everything people saw? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Like <laughs> These explanations, they might work for some of what people saw, but not everything, especially when you think about how consistent the reports were and how long this went on. And don't forget about those weird radar readings. Yeah, those are hard to explain away. And that's when it starts to get really interesting, because if you get rid of the most common explanations, the normal ones, well, that leaves you with the not so normal ones, you know, the elephant in the room, so to speak. The less conventional explanations, you mean. Yeah, exactly. What about the possibility that what people saw in the skies over D.C. back in 52 
What if it was something truly out of this world? It's definitely the most intriguing theory, isn't it? It is. And it makes sense in a way, right? When you have these events, you can't explain them with what we know. I mean, the idea of aliens, it doesn't seem so far-fetched then. Exactly. Plus, you can't ignore how much it's affected our culture. Yeah. The Washington flap kind of solidified this image we have of flying saucers, alien visitors. It's something that's still with us today. 100%. And here's the thing. There's no proof that it was aliens, sure. But there's no proof that it wasn't either. I think that's what keeps drawing us back to these stories all these years later. The mystery is still alive. But you know, it makes you wonder, something I've been thinking about. Imagine if this happened today. I mean, we've got smartphones now, social media, everyone's got a camera. Would we have more answers or would it just be even more confusing? Oh man, that's a good question. On the one hand, think about the technology. Back in 52, if everyone had a decent camera, can you imagine? We'd have so much footage, you couldn't just say it was mass hysteria or people seeing things. Exactly. But would it really give us answers? Or would we just have, like, way more information to sift through, more details, but still no real explanation? Maybe even more questions, more to argue about. I don't know, it really makes you think. It really does. It shows how powerful the unknown can be. Yeah. You know, people are curious, it's in our nature. We're drawn to mysteries, the possibility of finding something new, something amazing. And the Washington UFO sightings, they definitely qualify as amazing. It's a story full of intrigue, mystery, even a little Cold War paranoia thrown in there. That's for sure. It reminds us that no matter how advanced we get, there are still things out there we just don't understand. I kind of said it better myself. So next time you're looking up at the stars, think about what we talked about today. Be open-minded, embrace the mystery, and who knows, maybe you'll have your own close encounter to share someday. That's all the time we have for our deep dive into the Washington flap. But hey, until next time, keep exploring, keep those questions coming, and keep looking up.